Teaching English abroad is an incredible way to experience a new country and culture. It's so much different to live in another country rather than just visiting on a holiday. It's an experience that I personally think everyone should have at least once in their lives. And for those of you who don't know my story, you're new to the channel, you don't know how I got started with traveling, it was actually because I taught English abroad in China for a year and I absolutely fell in love with not only travel, but living in another country and fully immersing myself in a new culture culture on a daily basis. This led me to teaching abroad again in Prague and then again in Vietnam. So I do have some experience in this area. If you're looking to start your English teaching journey abroad, I have two really informative videos on my channel. One's a general Q&A and one's a general guide on how to get started. So make sure to check out those two videos. They'll be really helpful for any destination that you're kind of thinking about teaching English abroad. In, in this video, I'm going to dive deep into everything you need to know about one of the most popular English teaching destinations abroad, Spain, a lot of Americans dream of living in Europe at some point in their lives and teaching English is a great way to do that. Although the salaries are quite low here compared to teaching jobs in Asia, it's a great opportunity for you to live somewhere where you can experience a new culture on a daily basis but maybe not feel as completely overwhelmed or culture shocked by a different society like you would in Asia. My brother-in-law is on his second year of teaching English abroad in Madrid, Spain, so I asked him to help me out with all of the info for this video. So let's dive in, starting with how to get started. So first, let me explain the main type of teaching role that Spain has to offer. You wouldn't technically be an English teacher, you'd be an English language assistant. This means you'd be assigned to a classroom with a bilingual teacher and help out with different subjects and activities taught in English. For example, he works at a preschool and a primary school and he teaches English, natural science, social science, and music. He also works with the teacher to take groups of students out for specialized lessons like reading books, working on vocabulary, or doing speaking exercises, again, all of this in English. You wouldn't have your own classroom and you are always, for the most part, working with another teacher. Typically, you would work four days a week for about 16 hours per week, depending on your region and your specific program. The pay usually ranges from 800 to 1,000 euros per month, again, depending on the region and whether you're in a rural or an urban area. Madrid has one of the highest paying salaries, which is why it's super popular. So yes, the pay isn't great compared to an American salary, of course, or even teaching in Asia, like I mentioned, but look at that schedule. The freedom you have, the whole reason you're doing this for a year or even for a few years is to experience Spain. It's to travel around Europe as much as possible. And this job is the perfect opportunity to do that. Now let's talk about a few different companies you can be a language assistant with in Spain and what their differences are. CIEE, one of the most well-known programs for teaching English in Spain. CIEE offers extensive support, including visa assistance, insurance, and orientation week when you arrive in Madrid. It tends to be more expensive in terms of upfront fees. CIEE does ask for your preferences and location and what grade level you want to teach. And they do try to accommodate it, which is nice, as well as if you're coming to Spain or with a partner or a friend, you can request to teach at the same school or close so you can at least live together. NALCAP is through the Spanish Ministry of Education. This is the government-run program that offers positions across Spain, including rural and urban schools. It's often the most affordable as it's completely free to apply and health insurance is included, but support is more limited compared to CIEE as they do not provide extensive support on things like how to apply for a visa, how to apply for your residency card, how to get your young person metro card, how to apply to obtain certain documents to give to your school and how to set up a bank account, things like that. So if you don't feel comfortable doing those things, it might be worth the upfront cost of having more support. Medea is another private company that offers similar placements, but with more varied placement options, including private schools. They provide training and different program tiers with varying levels of responsibility and pay. Beta program run by Catholic schools in Spain, offering placements in religious schools. It provides similar work to the government program, but the pay can vary depending on the school. So honestly, you can't really go wrong with whichever company you decide to go with. They all have pros and cons. I've heard great things about all of the programs. You gotta just pick what's best for you. I have an entire video dedicated to these four programs, plus two others going into way more detail about the cost of each program, the average salary, your working hours per week, their support and visa assistance and more. So make sure to check out that video. You can make the most informed 
informed decision on which program is best for you. For the purpose of this video, I'm now going to dive into more detail about the CIEE program in Madrid since that's what my brother-in-law is doing, but just know this info is pretty similar to all programs because all of these programs have contracts with the Spanish government. So essentially, these companies are just here to help hire you, place you at a school, and help you get your visa. Once you arrive, you are a government employee, so it's kind of the same as doing the NALCAP from the get-go. So the first step is applying. The CIEE application involves several steps. First is the initial application. You'll fill out an application with your personal details, educational background, and a statement of intent. After my brother-in-law submitted his application, he did not have to do an interview. His application was accepted based on the application materials and essays, so this could depend for you, but just know it is possible to get hired without an interview altogether. And the final step is acceptance and payment. If accepted, you will need to pay a program fee, which can range from $1,000 to $3,000, depending on the program package. My brother-in-law paid around $2,000 and this fee covers your placement, orientation, visa assistance, and some insurance. They also offer to get you the TEFL certificate, but that's not necessary to teach in Spain for this specific job, but it could be helpful to get if you're interested in teaching in other locations after a year in Spain. After you go through that whole process, that's when you'd receive your official job offer. Once you're offered a position, you will receive the placement of your school, usually around the end of May. CIEE provides PDFs that will assist you with the student visa process, which includes gathering required documents and making appointments at the Spanish consulate. They literally give step-by-step -step screenshots on how to do everything and when it should be done. No one is there to do any of this process for you, but there are CIEE reps who will send emails and texts to ensure that you are meeting all of the deadlines. You can also email them questions if you have doubts, but the PDFs are pretty clear. Once you've accepted the job offer, you'll need to get started on your visa. For anyone who's looked into teaching English in Europe in general before, you'll know that it's pretty hard for Americans to get working visas in most countries in Europe, which is why typically people teach English abroad in Asian countries because the visas are quite simple to get, plus the higher salaries as I mentioned before. But the way that Spain gets around that is that technically you're going to be on a student visa, not a working visa, which is why you're a language assistant and not an actual English teacher. So in order to obtain this student visa, CIEE will assign someone to help you through the entire process step by step. Like I mentioned, you'll start by obtaining your documents. For this, you'll need your CIEE placement letter or invitation letter from the Spanish Ministry of Education, proof of insurance, this will be provided to you by CIEE, an FBI background check with a postal, which takes months to get a postal, so plan in advance, a medical certificate stating you're in good health, and the next step is making an appointment with your nearest Spanish consulate to apply for a student visa. Do keep in mind that some are far, they're not in every US state. We're lucky that we're from LA and there's a consulate there, so my brother-in-law was able to go in easily. But like if you're from Denver, for example, your consulate is also LA, so you might have to travel very far. Some consulates do let you mail in your application and then they'll mail it back to you, like San Francisco, for example. But it's based on where you live or where you go to school, if you've established a residence in another city for a university. The visa itself costs anywhere between $80 and $140, and it can take about three months to get, so apply as early as possible to be safe. Once you get your visa, you are ready to travel to Spain, you'll buy your flight and make sure it's between the dates you're allowed to enter that's specified on your visa. CIEE provides airport pickups and a shuttle bus when you arrive on the first day of orientation. Otherwise, if you get there early or on another day, you'll be responsible for getting from the airport to your accommodation. They will wait for you right outside the terminal wearing CIEE shirts, holding up CIEE signs, and CIEE organizes a hotel stay for orientation, typically lasting a few days to about a week. You'll most likely need to arrange long-term housing after that. My brother-in-law booked an Airbnb for about two and a half weeks after that initial hotel stay while he looked for apartments. And finding apartments in Madrid is really difficult and getting more expensive each year, so just keep that in mind. You can look for shared flats on platforms like Idealista, Photocasa, or Spotahome. You may also connect with other assistants through Facebook groups to find roommates, or people you meet the first few days when you arrive at CIEE. And the last things you'll need to officially be set up in Spain are 
are a bank account and a phone plan. CIEE offers some support in setting up a Spanish bank account and choosing a phone plan. Typically, you'll do this after arriving and securing your NIE, which is basically your identification number. It's kind of similar to your social security number back in the States. Your orientation leader will take you to the phone place to set up your phone plan as well. So both of them have some support, which is really nice because that can get confusing. Now, once you're settled into your new life in Spain, you'll start working and a typical work week is generally four days a week and you'll have Mondays or Fridays off. Your weekly schedule will consist of about 14 to 16 hours of classes itself, but a few more can be necessary for other things. Like my brother-in-law says he's usually at school for about 20 hours a week. You'll also have a break at school where you can have snacks and breakfast with the teachers, coffee, etc. but not all of the schools offer this. At his school, he starts at 9 a.m. and he finishes around 2 p.m., but some schools may have you stay for lunch at 2 p.m. and then teach another class or two after lunch. Each school has different schedules, so it's hard to be exact. On a typical day, you assist the lead teacher with lessons, pronunciation practice, conversation activities, or cultural presentations. They may also ask you to prepare a presentation about a specific event or a holiday like Halloween, Earth Day, Valentine's Day. It just depends how much the teachers that you work with actually want to use you. Some teachers will give you the whole class session to lead and then they'll just sit there and grade and just help keep the kids quiet. Some teachers will have you take small groups or individuals outside to work on lessons, games, conversations, and sometimes honestly you're just kind of standing there watching the teacher teach a lesson and it can be pretty boring. So depending on the school, you might teach various age groups from elementary, to high school. My brother-in-law teaches three-year-olds all the way up to fourth graders and his schedule has a lot of variety where he goes back and forth between the little kids and the older ones throughout the day. You'll be on a contract for one school year, which is typically the first week of October until the end of June. If you decide that you want to sign on for another contract, you'll need to reapply or extend your contract through the ministry's auxiliary program, so not through CIEE. This involves submitting a renewal application and you may or or may not be placed in the same school or region. Typically you are placed at the same school, but your school also must like you and agree to have you stay on for a second year. This is a conversation that you'd wanna have with your bilingual coordinator in about January or February if you're thinking of resigning. You will reapply directly through NALCAP, like I said, the Spanish government program, regardless if you did your first year with CIEE, which will save you money since this application process is free. You'll also need to renew your residency card and just keep in mind that the Spanish bureaucracy is super slow. My brother-in-law submitted his application to renew in early June and it is still processing now in October. So once you know that you want to re-sign your contract, start that process as soon as possible. So now you're all set from start to finish to teach English in Spain. If you're not sure if Spain is the place you want to teach, check out this in-depth guide on how to get you started with any teaching English job across the world.